Hello and welcome back to another easy online German video training. This lesson is for beginners and it's actually the first lesson for beginners on my website and I'm going to present it here. So if you are an advanced learner it may be boring. If you want to improve your pronunciation you can also watch this video lesson. So let's start with a little conversation. Mrs. Schmidt meets Mrs. Williams and they have a little conversation. Mrs. Schmidt asks if she speaks German and then she answers, yes, I understand a little German. And then Mrs. Schmidt asks, are you American? And she says, no, I'm English. And then she is asked where she comes from and Mrs. Schmidt comes from Hamburg and Mrs. Williams says that she knows Hamburg and that it's a nice town. So this is the content of the conversation and we're going to start with the question of Mrs. Schmidt and she says Guten Tag, sprechen Sie Deutsch? So, good day, if you translate it literally, speak you German. And sie is the polite form and you always have to write it with a capital letter. So, let's see what the pronunciation is like. Guten Tag, guten Tag. We have a long U sound in guten and an unstressed E in the last syllable. Most of the time we Germans don't speak this unstressed E. So it's guten, guten and tag. The G is pronounced like a K. It's not such a strong K, but at least it's not a hard G sound. Guten Tag. Sprechen. Sprechen is also the infinitive of to speak. And sprechen Sie? Do you speak? Sie is the polite form. Sprechen. We have the sh sound and the P, as you can see in the phonetic script, in brackets, SP is always pronounced SHP at the beginning of a word. So it's SPRECHEN. And a problem sound may be the guttural R, which is rubbed between the uvula and the back part of the tongue. So it's not a rolled R. This R is not rolled at the back, but rubbed. So it's not R, it's R, R. Okay, so you have to bring the SH sound and the P, which is produced in the front, and the guttural R together somehow sprechen. We have a short E sound here, sprechen. And the next problem sound is the soft CH and in the phonetic script we use this little C with the little tick at the bottom and the CH is a grouped consonant and here we have a soft CH. Sprechen. If you whisper the word yes So don't use your vocal cords. Yes. yes. This is the sound. And the next word, Z, the polite form for you. Z. It's a soft S and a long E sound. In the phonetic script we use a double point or colon to express that we have a long sound 
or a long vowel in a word. So, Z. We have a diphthong and this is the E E diphthong. This is always a long E sound. So, it's not an E or a sound. Z. And in Deutsch, we have the next diphthong, it's the oi diphthong. E and U is oi. In the phonetic script we use the sign for the open O sound O and the sign for the U sound. So it's oi. Oi. It's not oi. It's not an E sound at the end of this diphthong. It's rather an U sound, so Deutsch. And we have another grouped consonant here. It's SCH, which is a SH sound. So in the phonetic script you see the sign for the SH sound after the T. So it's Guten Tag. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? And it's important that we have the predicate first when we have a question and then comes the subject. So it's Sprechen Sie. Guten Tag. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? The next sentence is a normal positive sentence. Mrs. Williams answers, I understand a little German. And she says, Ich verstehe ein bisschen Deutsch. Ich, I, we have a short E sound. E, it's not E, it's E. Ich. And we have the soft CH sound. So try to whisper yes, yes. And you will get very close to this sh sound. Ich. Verstehe. Verstehe. The V is pronounced like an F. You can see this in the phonetic script. And we have the A sound again and a central R sound which is slightly more constricted than a normal R sound. So not as open. Verstehe. ST is also pronounced sh and t, so similar to sp, sp, we have st. We have this when st or sp stands at the beginning of a word. Now we have verstehen, so it's not at the beginning, but it's in the middle of the word, however, the word verstehen is derived from the verb stehen, to stand. And fair is a prefix. So similar to stand and understand, we have stehen and verstehen in German. Verstehen we have a long E sound. In the script we have an E and the colon, which means that it's a long vowel. And we have an unstressed E. So, ich verstehe. The H is a lengthening H. And this means that the H is only there to make the vowel in front of it long. 
so the H itself is not spoken. Ich verstehe. Ein bisschen means a little. Ein bisschen. We have the I diphthong in the word ein. We write E and I, but this is pronounced I. A and E, that's how we pronounce the vowels in German, becomes I. Ein bisschen. We have a short E sound in bisschen and a sharp S and we have the CH, the soft CH again in this word, like in the word ich to bisschen, bisschen, ein bisschen. And Deutsch, you already know. Ich verstehe ein bisschen Deutsch. Ich verstehe ein bisschen Deutsch. So we have a normal positive sentence and you can see that we have the subject first and then the predicate. Verstehe. In the next sentence, Mrs. Schmidt asks Mrs. Williams, Are you American? Sind Sie Amerikanerin? Sind Sie Amerikanerin? Sind, are, sind, we have a soft S, at the beginning of German words and a short E sound. The D is spoken like a T when we have it at the end of a word. Sind. Sind. Sie, you already know, are you American? Sind Sie Amerikanerin? Amerikanerin is the female word for American. Amerikaner would be the male form, but here we have a woman, so we use the ending en or i and n, and this is the ending for female forms. Amerikanerin contains two guttural R sounds, so rub it at the back between the back part of the tongue and the uvula. Don't roll it, so it's not r, it's r. You just have to make this channel between uvula and the back part of the tongue a little more narrow. Amerikanerin. And the stress is on the fourth syllable A me ri kanerin. We have a little tick in the phonetic script and most of the time the stress is on the first syllable in German words but sometimes it can also be different especially when we have foreign words. So here it's Amerikanerin. Sind Sie Amerikanerin? Are you American? And we have a female form here and Mrs. Williams answers no, I am English. And we also have a female form again. Nein, ich bin Engländerin. Nein, ich bin Engländerin. Nein, the word for no. We have this I diphthong again, E and I, but we pronounce it I. 
Nein. We have the word ich, which means I again. Bin, ich bin, I am. We have a short E sound in bin too. Ich bin, I am. Engländerin. Engländer would be the male form and Engländerin is the female form. Here we have a stress on the first syllable, Engländerin. We have a short A sound in this word and we have the N sound because we have the combination of N and G and we also have a special sign in the phonetic script. Engländerin. We have a second A sound after the L and an unstressed E sound and a short E sound at the end. Engländerin. Nein, ich bin Engländerin. Nein, ich bin Engländerin. And then Mrs. Williams asks Mrs. Schmidt, Und woher kommen Sie? And where do you come from? And where from come you? Is the literal translation. So she asks, Und woher kommen Sie? Und is and und. We have a short U sound in this word, the O sound und, and the D is spoken like a T again. Und. The next word is woher, where from. Woher. The German W is always pronounced like the English V sound. We have a long O sound. Woher. O. Woher. And the H is pronounced in this word because with the E we have a full vowel following the H in the middle. So we don't have a lengthening H here. Woher? So we have a long E sound after the H and a central R sound. So it's this R sound which is slightly more constricted. Und woher kommen Sie? Woher? Kommen. Kommen is the word for to come. Sie kommen, you come, it's the polite form. And we have a question again. So we have the predicate first and then the subject. Common contains an open O sound or it's the same sound we have in morning, but in German it's always a short sound. Common. Common. Z, you already know. It means you, but it's the polite form. Und woher kommen Sie? And where do you come from? Und woher kommen Sie? And then Mrs. Schmidt answers, Ich komme aus Hamburg. Ich komme aus Hamburg. Ich komme I come, ich, you already know, and komme, aus, we have the diphthong au, 
in this word a and u becomes au hamburg 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 the stress is on the first syllable like in most of the german words and then we have a short u sound again the o sound and the r is pronounced like an unstressed e sound so hamburg hamburg and the g is pronounced like a k because we have it at the end of a word ich komme aus hamburg and by the way we do pronounce the h at the beginning of a word or syllable so hamburg is a word which is pronounced with an H at the beginning. And Mrs. Schmidt asks Mrs. Williams, Do you know Hamburg? Kennen Sie Hamburg? Kennen Sie Hamburg? Literally, know you Hamburg. So we have the predicate at the beginning again. The predicate is everything which belongs to the verb of a sentence, and then comes the subject. Kennen, to know a person or a city. Kennen Sie Hamburg? We have a short a sound in this word and the unstressed e in the last syllable. Z you already know and Hamburg you also know. So, kennen Sie Hamburg? Do you know Hamburg? Or literally, know you Hamburg? And then Mrs. Williams answers, ja. Ich mag Hamburg sehr. Literally, yes, I like Hamburg very. So in English you would have to say, yes, I like Hamburg very much. Ja, the German word for yes. Ja, ich, you already know ich, the German word for I. Mag. Ich mag, I like. And the G is pronounced like a K once again. Ich mag Hamburg sehr. Sehr. We have a soft S at the beginning of sehr and a long E sound and a central R sound. So the H is a lengthening H in this word. Sehr. The H is only there to make the vowel E long. And the R is pronounced like a central R sound. So it's not a guttural R. Ja, ich mag Hamburg sehr. Ja, ich mag Hamburg sehr. And then she adds, Hamburg ist eine schöne Stadt. Hamburg is a nice city. Hamburg ist eine schöne Stadt. Hamburg is a nice city. So Hamburg is, Hamburg ist. Ist with a short E sound. I Eine schöne Stadt, a nice city. Schön is beautiful or nice. And in this sentence we have the nominative form of a noun, eine schöne Stadt. 
So we have to decline the adjective and the article eine schöne Stadt. Eine is the female form of ein, so it's the undefined article. Eine is the female form. Schöne. We have a special sound, it's the Ö sound. So it's a mix of E and O. And the trick is you say E with rounded lips but leave the tongue where it is. E. Schöne. Schöne. And the corners of the mouth have to be tensed. So it's not O. This is a protruded roundedness, but Ö is a compressed roundedness. Schöne. We have an unstressed E at the end and Stadt is the word for city. Stadt. We have ST at the beginning, which means we have a sh sound and a t, stadt, and a short r sound, and dt is spoken like a t. So, Hamburg ist eine schöne Stadt. Hamburg ist eine schöne Stadt. So, maybe we can go through these Sentences once again. Guten Tag. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ich verstehe ein bisschen Deutsch. Sind Sie Amerikanerin? Nein, ich bin Engländerin. Und woher kommen Sie? Ich komme aus Hamburg. Kennen Sie Hamburg? Ja, ich mag Hamburg sehr. Hamburg ist eine schöne Stadt. This was the first conversation and I hope you like this little lesson. So if you're interested to repeat this small talk or conversation, you can click on the link in the description below this video and You can repeat the words, you can practice the words and the grammar and you can also practice the sentences. So, this was all for today and stay tuned for the next German lessons. For today I say bye-bye, take care or as we say in German, tschüss.